Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Great to see you all again. It's been a couple of weeks, sorry about that. I have been crazy busy, I'm temping, I'm trying to buy a car, I just threw a surprise birthday party for my mom this week. So today we're gonna to talk about kids, part two in dentistry, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we're actually just gonna stick with the good and the bad because talking about ugly just made it sound too negative. And honestly, working with children is great. So we're gonna to stick to those. <laughs> I think working with kids is a lot of fun. I have three younger sisters. I've always worked with kids, I guess you could say. My first job was in daycare. I've worked summer camp. I work with the church youth groups. It's just, it's a lot of fun. I love working with kids, it's a lot of fun. Why don't I work in a peds office? Well, that's a whole story for probably the end of the video. But I do enjoy working with kids. I love when they come into the general, you know, dental practices that I work for. It's a nice variety. Um, and it's just it's kind of a highlight to your day. I always put my fun scrubs on when the kids are coming in and there are ways you can like decorate the rooms and but we'll get into all that. So, Well, let's start with decorating the room. So when we were first in hygiene school, we were allowed to decorate our ops and that was super fun. So my friends and I went to, I think it was like the dollar store or something and we bought these little like plush flowers with smiley faces on them that had the stem on them, had like a wire in it, and we would wrap that up and around the light so they had a flower like shining down on their face when they'd look up, and that was super cute. And we all bought clown noses, which I still use, and we got, I don't remember, we just, we had like stickers and just fun stuff, you know. So we, we decorated up our ops, and then it was something where it would go into my little hygiene bucket that I'd drag around with me to clinic, and so if I had kids, then I'd quick, you know, throw some stuff up just to make it more friendly and a lot more fun. I have to tell you guys about this office that was north of me by about an hour. Anyway, it was a train station. They decorated the entire office like a train station. So this was for kids. And you would come into the lobby and they had it set up like a little train depot. So the counter had like, you know, the little ticket window and you could walk up to the ticket window. And they actually had mannequins in there, which was a little creepy. But, um, so they had like a little kid, you know, like peeking through the window and stuff, and these little mannequins. Uh, but they had, just, I don't know, the whole thing was decorated like a train depot from like the probably 1800s maybe. It was, it was really, really cute. And then as you went in, you didn't sit in an op, you had a platform. So there was like the red train platform and the blue train platform and the green and the yellow. And you, everything, everything was trained in the office. It was absolutely beautiful. And every hour on the hour, he actually had a track that ran up and around kind of the top of this, almost near the ceiling, um, something, you know, like a little shelf like this. And a train would go around and go woo woo, like every hour. Um, just, you know, super cute stuff. It was really fun to work in there. I got in there, I think maybe three times. And it was just, what a cool idea, you know? And this was this guy's dream. Like he'd always wanted to work with kids. He'd always wanted to make a little train station for them. And, well, probably for himself, honestly. <laughs> but I know the kids loved it. They thought that was so fun. And they got their little ticket, you know, to tell them which platform they were supposed to go to. And it was just, it was super, it was a great idea. When you go into Pete's offices, there's usually just, you know, they'll have a theme or they'll have a lot of stuffed animals or there's, you know, like a Wii or something in the, in the lobby for the kids to play. There's usually just, they're, they get really creative with it. And it's really fun to see what people come up, come up with for the kids to do. One of my favorite things when working with kids is working with the first timers. We call it a happy visit. The kid comes in, it's their very first trip to the dentist. There's usually, you know, three, four years old, so they're pretty little, uh, very wide-eyed, very, you know, like what is going on, you know, all the new sights and smells and sounds and getting them comfortable in the chair and letting them know that you know this is not a scary environment is so key in that first visit so we name our tools we have like mr thirsty who's the suction and he sucks all the saliva out of your mouth and that one's always fun because getting them to close on that you go okay you gotta close close and they're like and like no, no no like close your lips like a straw oh okay and then you know of course sucks in and they just kind of, they get, you get this moment of ah, and you have to immediately react to it. Wasn't that cool? That was, Cause otherwise they'll start crying cause they're like, what just happened? Um, but if you can catch them on, you know, catch them right. Then they're just like, okay, yeah, that was, that was cool. You know, and you're like, Hey, wasn't that fun? 
<laughs> Let's see. So you show them your like mini mirror, you know, and you're gonna count their teeth. So when we go in with the explorer to check for cavities, we're counting the counting the teeth. Um, you're hoping they'll have 20. They better have 20. So you sit there and you like, you know, you count them one, two, three, and they ask, you know ask them how how many teeth do you have and. And they think that's cool. You show them all your gear, what you have to wear. You put the bib on to keep their nice shirt clean. Um, and then you keep them super distracted by asking them questions. What is your favorite animal? What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite color? Color's a good one because you can hopefully match that to whatever toothbrush you're gonna give them. So that's, that's a good one to know. Um, what do they wanna be when they grow up? That one is super interesting. I'm always really curious to see what kids will say. Some of them, you know, three, four years old, they're like, well, I'm gonna do this, you know, and you're going, way to go. <laughs> and others are like, eh, and that's cool too. So if you have a, a real outgoing kid, it can be really fun, you know, do you have any pets? There's just a lot of questions you can ask them. And then what's fun is you write those answers in your notes. So next time the kid comes in, you can say, hey, how's your little dog? Poppy doing, you know, is she, is she hurt her leg last time, is she any better? Okay, cool, you know, and they go, wow, she remembered that, that's really amazing. So it helps to kind of build that bond. You know, we get to the fluoride, so we tell them that the fluoride is gonna be their vitamins, and we kind of explain how that works. We explain sugar bugs, and how when you drink pop or eat sugar, or even things like pasta and bread, how the bugs in your teeth, like, eat your teeth, they, they pee on your teeth. Actually, it depends on how dirty the teeth the kids uh, the kid is and how old they are before I maybe go into that one. But yeah, I mean it's the bacteria releases acid on the teeth. That's what causes the cavity. So we talk about what a cavity is, how that's a hole in the tooth that's caused by the sugar bugs when they pee on your teeth. So you have to brush your teeth a couple times a day, and it's just it's fun to come up with with funny ideas for the for the rural little ones. And then you know the doctor comes in and they do a quick peek around and pretty much if if during the happy visit they're doing really well. Um, you will polish their teeth, floss their teeth, talk to them about brushing. Sometimes we disclose them. I usually don't disclose them that young because it's not going to make a huge difference unless their teeth are just a wreck and then their parents need to see that they're missing because usually at this point the parents are still pretty much brushing the teeth. When they're done, you give them a toy, you give them some stickers, you give them a cool toothbrush, and I always do it like trick-or-treating, like I let them hold the goodie bag, and then I go, okay, and this is your toothpaste, and you drop it in, and they're just like, whoa, and this is your floss, whoa, and this is your toothbrush, ah! you know, and they just think that's the coolest thing. Um, and then of course, then they get to run over to the treasure box and, and pick a toy out or something, and then, the dentist is amazing. We want to go to the dentist and that's kind of what you want to set up for like a lifelong thing where, you know, even if they get a cavity at some point, they're not going to hate you because they had good experiences when they were super little. So the first visit's always fun. When they get to be a little older, it's a little bit more about educating them. Uh, when they get into their teens, then it's a lot more about just getting them to brush and floss regularly. I mean, their parents can't get them to shower hardly, let alone <laughs> do anything else. But if we can get them to brush, you know, you can say, oh, well, do you have a girlfriend? Hmm, you know when you kiss her that you're like bleeding into her mouth, you may want to brush and floss a little bit more and they're just like, Ugh. And uh, that usually cures them pretty fast. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's about getting creative and knowing your, your kid. Like, you're not gonna say that to everybody, but it's, you know, whatever works. So if you've got a kid that is curious, obedient, you know, we'll lay in the chair nicely. A lot of times you have to have them like sit on their hands. Some of them will do it automatically. Their parents have already taught them that, so that's cool. But um, sometimes they'll just, you know, they, they can't help themselves. They want to have their hands like here because they're nervous um, and just have them sit on their hands and that usually does well or you can just keep pushing their hand away. But I, I'm always afraid of like poking them. <laughs> so it's like, okay, they're just gonna have you. Hey, can you sit on your hands for me for just a second? <gasps> cool, okay, I'm gonna count your teeth one more time then we're done and you just, you know, you wanna keep it super upbeat. Okay, so fun story. I had one kid in my office, uh, it's probably six, seven years ago, and he and his dad were always coming together and then his twin brother and his mom would come in together. And he really wanted to be a dentist. Like he was, he was very, very shy, so he wouldn't say a lot, but he was really curious too. And he was really, you know, very easy to work on, always was just very obedient, open his mouth, wouldn't fiddle around, wouldn't try and touch stuff. Um, but he really wanted to be a dentist. So we came up with this game that we would do every time he'd come in. 
and I would go, I'd, I'd set everything up in the room and then I'd go out to the lobby and I'd bring just him back first. And we would dress him in the back room and he'd get his own like lab coat. I made him a little name tag. He would get uh, a mask. I'd get the smallest gloves I could find. This kid was like five or six years old. And we'd, we'd put these gloves on him that were just like hanging off the fingers because they were so long. And we'd get him all dressed up so he looked like a dentist. And then we'd walk back out to the lobby together and we'd say, Mr. So-and-so, Dr. So-and-so is ready to see you now. And then his dad would grin really big and he'd come back and we'd sit dad down in the chair and this little kid would push the x-ray button for me, so obviously safe because he's outside the room, but he got to expose the button and he would uh, do the suctioning for the whole thing and he'd sit there and he'd, you know, suction and he was so cute, like he loved it so much, it was so fun. And would I do that with every kid? No, I did it with one kid in 13 years, but we did it all the time for him because he loved it and he was just the type of kid that you would do that with. Um, so just, you know, if your kids are curious about dentistry, figure out a way to get them involved so they can actually participate too. They really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. One more thing that really makes dentistry with kids a lot of fun, honestly, can be the parents. Uh, how they set the kid up initially with, you know, there's, there's a lot of dental books out there. My first visit to the dentist, there's little videos. There's a really cute video I saw years ago that was a Jack Russell Terrier goes to the dentist with his mom, so cute. Uh, there's one of a chimpanzee like learning to brush and floss. That is adorable, I don't know if you could find that, but that's adorable. The, this awesome little chimpanzee, he's got this huge toothbrush and instead of brushing with his hand, he just throws his head back and forth, his little ears like, it's the cutest thing, oh my goodness. Um, so depending on how the pa parent feels about the dentist, a lot of times has a lot to do with how that first visit goes and how the kid will then react to the dentist in the future. And so uh, some parents, you know, they come in and they're just like gung-ho, this is going to be amazing, it's going to be so much fun, and the kid's just really excited. And then when it's done, the parent's like, all right, you did awesome, let's go get ice cream. Or let's, and you're going, I just cleaned their teeth. But it's, you know, it's, it's good that they, they reward them and, you know, it's not like going to the, the doctor or whatever where it's going to be more of a negative thing because there's shots and, you know, different stuff the kids aren't liking. Uh, but yeah, parents can be just a huge, huge piece about if kids learn to love the dentist. So part of it's you, part of it's their personality, honestly. Some of the kids are just super, super shy. I was one of those kids growing up. I was very, very shy, wouldn't talk to anybody. Loved my dentist growing up because he was very shy too and we just wouldn't talk to each other and we were best friends. <laughs> it worked out great. And some of the kids are going to be just, you know, all over the place, bouncing off the walls, but, you know, if they've got a good attitude about it, it's not so bad. <laughs> okay, thought I'd try a different background for the rest of this video. Is this not gorgeous? So we use this for my mom's birthday party and it's fantastic. I love it. I might just leave it in here. Okay, so let's talk about the bad. And in some cases, I guess the ugly. <laughs> so when working with kids, um, you know, kind of the make or break is honestly the parents. And uh, some of the things I've seen. So a lot of times we'll allow a parent to come and sit in the op when the kid is there. And I'm not a parent, but I completely understand why you would want to. And honestly, for the most part, I have no issue with that. If you want to come and sit in, cool. But just know that after I ask you about their health history and their, you know, any, any problems that they might be having with their teeth or any concerns you have about their teeth, my entire attention is going to be on them and I expect them to answer my questions. Now, if they're super shy kids, we'll default to mom or dad, no big deal. Um, but Parents a lot of times will try and answer every single question for the kid. They just can't help themselves. It's so funny. Um, and some kids are a whole different child when mom or dad is in the room. Um, if mom and dad leave, and even if they just stand in the hallway where the kid can't see them, so they can still be present, but they just the child can't see them, the attitude completely changes on some of these kids, usually for the better, honestly. And it's so interesting how that works. So if the kid is being really unruly, not paying attention, being rude, 
Um, sometimes I have the parents stand in the hallway and say, you know what, can I talk to you for just a minute? And I'll explain to them, I said, you know, I'm just gonna try and experiment. You can stand here so you can see everything, but I just need to see how their behavior is with you outside of the room. And a lot of times they're like, okay, yeah, sure. And again, they just, they're standing over my shoulder. The kid can't see him at all. Um, and, and the kid's behavior changes like that. And it's just amazing how now they'll interact with me. Now they'll do, you know, they'll sit still. They're not whiny. Um, so it's, yeah, it's make or break with parents, honestly. So a good example of that is I had these twins at one of my last offices and gorgeous little girls very both very shy both very shy um, when they were in the room with dad they would sit in the chair nicely he'd hold their hand because uh, they were scared but they would well the well the one for sure would get a cleaning every time she came in the other one was kind of a hit or miss with her um, but usually if dad was in the room and holding her hand she would get her cleaning and she would act like a normal child <laughs> she'd do very well however when mom was in the room like if dad was getting his teeth cleaned and mom was in the room with the girls um again the first one would do okay usually sometimes not though and the second one was just a nightmare like i started dreading having these little girls come in uh so good example one day she decided she was not going to get a cleaning um we got her in the chair you know, could you sit, your turn, let's sit the chair, you know, she crawls in the chair for just a second and then she screams no and crawls under the chair and gets in underneath like all with all the mechanical like hydraulic stuff. I'm like, nah, don't get, what are you doing? Um, wouldn't come out and that was exciting and her mom's like pleading with her and just, oh, come on, baby. And I mean, this kid was not having it, not having it. Um, on a different day, she actually jumped out of the chair and ran down the hallway screaming. That was exciting. Um, had never had that happen before. <laughs> no! <laughs> you know, and you're like, okay then. I didn't think I was that scary, shucks. Um, and that's after, you know, we always had her sister go first because her sister was usually more likely to do it. And then we're so, okay, you know, so-and-so did it. Now it's your turn. You know, she it was, she was fine. We just tickled her teeth a little bit. You know, it didn't hurt. It's, now it's your turn. No, she go tearing off down the hallway. And again, if dad would go get her, then she'd sit in the chair. If mom went to get her, it was over. It was like, you know what? We'll try again next time. We'll try again in six months when she's a little older. Maybe she'll handle it then. Hmm. Hmm. It just, it never really improved with her. Um, and typically mom was in the room with them. At one point mom walked out. She needed to go, I think schedule like appointments or something. And this girl calmed down instantly. And I went, interesting. So again, it can be a lot of just like the dynamics of the family. Um, pay close attention to those cause that can make or break your appointment and run you way behind or maybe you don't get anything done that day or sometimes like, it goes awesome. So <laughs> good to know. So I was working on this parent once and she brought her kids with her and one of them <clears throat> was running up and down the hallway with his toys making all kinds of noises and the other one the girl was in the room with us and she was in the assistant chair and she's spinning the assistant chair and she's kicking the wall coo, coo, coo. and i'm looking at the wall going is she making a dent i think she's making a dent I think I see scratches over there. And mom was pretty much just over it. Like she was so over being a parent at that point in her day. And it was kind of a girl, stop doing that. And she'd lay back down, you know, and she'd kind of yell at her son, would you sit down someplace, you know, but just like there are probably 15 minutes in between where the kids are just causing havoc and she's not paying any attention. <laughs> and, and you know you could tell that these kids were a lot to handle and some days you know if your kids are in those kinds of moods or if you are cancel your appointment because when they left and she did see it but her child had put a hole in that wall with the chair um, the handle that adjusts the chair had smashed into the wall in two different places and left a hole in the wall and I saw mom see it 
and ignore it and walk out. And I went, okay then. I mean, can't hardly blame her, but you gotta blame her. One of the other uh, really bad things, honestly, sometimes with being kid with, with kids is, again, with the parents, I've had parents come in and tell me, I have been all over my kid. They're not brushing their teeth. You be as rough on them as you want. I want you to poke them. I want you to be mean to them. I want you to tell them they've got cavities ever. Bring the needles in if you want. Like you scare this kid so bad they brush their teeth. I'm so over this. And you're going, huh? That's not my job. Uh, uh, but yeah, I've had, I've had multiple parents just go and, and sometimes in front of the child too where they'll go you be as mean to him as you want you just you poke him he deserves anything you do to him today and you're like wow that's horrible and then of course we have the parents that are super afraid of the dentist themselves usually for a legitimate reason they've had some bad experience usually as a child with their dentist because honestly dentists in previous generations were not as nice to kids as they are now I have heard stories of people being duct taped, slapped. I mean, can you imagine your dentist slapping you? What? Uh, so, you know, just lots of traumatic stories out there. So people who are afraid of the dentist usually, and I know I've said this in other, other videos, but are usually afraid truly for a reason. So these, uh, they, what happens though is they, they pass that fear onto their children. The first time this kid comes in, they already know there's gonna be shots. They already know there's gonna be, you know, tons of pain and everything hurts and it's a big torture chair. And, or the parent doesn't say anything and they just sit there and like wring their hands the whole time and that anxiety is just like flowing off of them. And of course your kid picks up on everything you're feeling. So the kids come in, they're super nervous because mom and dad is obviously super nervous and I don't know why they're nervous but there's obviously some reason to be nervous. And it just, it gets, crazy really fast so as a parent always please watch your energy and don't tell kids nightmare stories about when you were a dentist like i when i had my wisdom teeth pulled out it sucked okay i had swelling for a week my jaw locked shut it was and the only thing i didn't get was dry sockets it was miserable do i tell my patients that when they're getting ready to have their wisdom teeth out no i don't I tell them it will be fine. It's temporary, it's once in a lifetime, and then it's over. And everybody's journey is different. My three sisters didn't have any swelling, any pain. It was just me. I got to be the unlucky one. It sucks, but that's just kind of how it is. So I'm not gonna tell everybody that, oh, it was horrible. No, because yeah, that again, that was mine, and it was because of how my teeth were situated, and you know, don't, don't do that to people. Rant over. <laughs> Again, a lot of times parents kind of ruin it for the kids. Um, a good dentist will never tell your child they are going to use a needle on them. If we do need to get your child numb, we're going to have them close their eyes and we're going to tell them that we are going to spray something on their tooth to make it go to sleep. And it's going to feel kind of funny, but it's just going to go to sleep for a little while and then it'll come back. And so they close their eyes and you take the needle. You have, you're holding it pretty much under the chair where they can't see it. Once they have their eyes closed and you come at it for a low angle. So they never see this needle. They have no idea. Same thing with the lasers. Like if we're using lasers, your kid has a tied tongue where they can't move their tongue outside their mouth because it's attached to the bottom part of their mouth. You get in there with a laser, zet, 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 and it's done. There's no pain. There's very fast recovery time. The parents are sitting there behind me going, <laughs> Does it hurt? Does it hurt? Are they hurting? Honey, honey, are you okay? You know, and the kid's like, yeah, I'm fine. Why, mom? You know, and they don't know. If you do it right, they don't know. And so, don't freak out your children. One of the major reasons I don't work in a pedo office is because I am an introvert. I know y'all probably don't believe that, but I'm an introvert. And it takes a lot of energy for me to get up and be that like, ah, person with these kids for an hour. 30, 30 minutes to an hour, depending on, you know, whatever. And it's just, uh, you do that eight hours out of the day, I'm completely exhausted. I did temp in a peds office once and it was a really exhausting day. It was fun, but it took a ton out of me and it's not something I'd want to do every day. Like if I worked there one day a week or something, I think that'd be great, but I just couldn't do it every day. It's not my personality. So as much as I love kids, I couldn't do that every day. If, you love working with kids absolutely consider it because it's a lot of fun and if it's something that you don't thrive on 
than you know working a general dentist where you're gonna see kids and one of the favorite things honestly was the office I was at for almost six years my kids were growing up on me and they were turning into like little teenagers and it was so cute to have them go from you know their first time in to being you know nine ten years old now and just watching them literally grow up in front of you well what are you into now and what do you you know and it's you really get to know a lot of them they're super cute okay so we're gonna close this off with one more story I had a kid in one of my offices he was about 14 years old so this is into the <clears throat> ugly category okay so he was in the butt from the very first day he walked in. I don't know how else to say that. He came in and he sits down in the chair. He didn't want to be there. He's one of those like cloud over their head type of Eeyores. You know, he's just kind of a meh, moody, meh, kind of, kind of person. And his mom stayed in the lobby. She didn't want to be in the back with us. And she was absolutely exhausted. You could tell she was so over this kid and her day and life and she was just like zoned out. She goes, good, I have an hour to just sit here and whatever. Poor thing. So I sit him back down in the chair in my room and I went over to the sink to wash my hands and he starts screaming, ow, ow, you're hurting me. And making these noises like I'm killing him and I look over in absolute just shock and he's got his eyes closed so he doesn't even realize that I'm nowhere near him but he's freaking out every other patient in the office because he's doing these horrible noises and screaming for help and I looked at him and I said would you open your eyes please and he opens his eyes, you know, he kind of looks around and he sees I'm like five feet from him. I said, you know, that's really only effective if I'm near you because nobody's going to believe you if I'm across the room. He was like, oh, yeah, huh, okay, what? So that was just the beginning of the appointment. Then he sits, so he's in the chair, I'm gloved up, I'm ready to go. I start working on him and he has nasty teeth, nasty, nasty, just it hasn't brushed in weeks, you know, just red gums, junk all over the place. And I went, ugh, I have to cap it on this kid. There's no way I'm gonna be able to just like polish this off. He needs, he needs work. So I pulled out my cabaton and actually handed him the slow speed suction to hang on to. And he, it's on and he takes this thing and he gets this little smirk on his face and he's looking at me and he starts like, taking this thing towards my forehead as I'm working on it. I mean, it's like, do, 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 do. and I see what he's about to do. He's gonna touch me with this nasty thing that's already been in his mouth. And <laughs> at this point, oh no, had he meowed before that? Yeah, so before that he was meowing. So I would ask him a question, meow, or at random, just at random, he's got meow, meow, really loud. <laughs> What is your deal? Like, what are you on? <laughs> what drugs are you taking? It was crazy. Uh, so he was doing that for a while. Now he's now he's trying to touch me with a suction. And I have my air water syringe. I'd put the Cavitron down and I was gonna rinse him and I had my air water syringe. And I looked at him and I said, if you touch me with that, I'm gonna spray water up your nose. And he immediately puts it down because I was being serious. <laughs> I would have taken that air water syringe and just lasted his sinuses clean. Um, which I'm pretty sure is considered abuse, so I'm glad I didn't do that. But <laughs> it was very tempting at the moment. Um, but thankfully he believed me, so he quit and he didn't do that the rest of the appointment. But um, yeah, just his, he was so whiny. And so, I oh, want this hurt. Ow, oh, you're hurting me the whole time. <sighs> I was just like, I'm so over you, kid. I can see why your mom looks like that out in the lobby. Like, I get it. I get it, lady. Uh, anyway, so I, we had... A very interesting conversation and I never saw him again I'm pretty sure they changed Dennis after that I'm pretty sure he told his mom that I threatened to spray water up his nose and I don't care I really don't care <laughs> but I, just went, I have never dealt with anybody like you before that is you are being ridiculous 
you were acting like a three-year-old. What's wrong with you? No, I, that's not even true. Like I have three-year-olds that act nicer than that. So whatever. Anyway, he was kind of my awful kid. <laughs> I don't know what is, what, what, why? Okay, so that's pretty much all I had for the week. Hope you enjoyed some of my crazy stories. And sorry this was so long, but it's hard to go into stories and not get long. So that's what I've discovered. Have a great week. Make sure you like and subscribe. I have an idea for next week. Uh, would any of you guys be interested in doing like a live stream with me where I come on and try and answer your guys' questions live? I personally prefer this format because I like to edit and make myself look smarter than I am. But it would be nice to actually get to kind of know you guys a little bit better. So let me know. I'm thinking maybe next Thursday at about 7 p.m. Eastern and hope to see you there. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to chat. We'll see you next week.